Today we're going to be looking at this Royal Clutch keyboard, which is a 75% keyboard, it's got 84 keys. You can use it via Bluetooth, you can use wireless, and you can use it on a cable. And not only that, it's RGB, it's got a removable frame as well. All the products we've had from Royal Kludge have this same style box. It's black and orange. It just says Royal Kludge keyboard on it. You wouldn't know even the model number if it wasn't for the sticker that had been put on the side with a serial number on it. Inside the box, you've got the keyboard, lots of plastic bags. You've also got a USB-C to A cable, a manual. You've got a key cap as well as a switch remover in one. You've got four switches, so red switches spare, because it's obviously red switches are on here. You've also got two magnetic feet as well. Let's have a look at the keyboard, but first of all, if you notice that the lighting on the keyboard isn't very bright, it's because we've got studio lights pointed directly at it, which washes out the RGB lighting. We will do some B-roll in a few minutes, so it gives you a better idea of what it looks like in normal conditions. So let's have a look at the keyboard. Obviously, we've got a black keyboard here. Uh, to my knowledge, they do a white version as well. We've got red switches in this one. As you can see, it is a cut down keyboard. It's classed as a 75% keyboard because, well, it's missing 25%. It's better the basics of it. It's not necessarily missing all of it because normally there's some of the keys you would normally get here. They have pushed them up here and you can use your combination keys to actually do all the effects and different things if needs be. Now there is 84 keys altogether. You can still do everything you can do on a normal keyboard. It's just some of the things what you never use, like the number pad and stuff are missing there. Also makes it smaller, it makes it so your mouse is closer to the keyboard as well, so there's less distance between your hands, easier to hit uh, all the commands on the keyboard. And also it's easier if you're traveling as well because it takes up less room, easier to fit in a bag and so forth. And a lot of people do prefer a smaller keyboard than the really big ones. You've still got all your function keys at the top so you're not missing any of those. They're all there. And you can also use obviously the function key uh, as in the FN key uh, as well as different things to do obviously different functions. So let's go onto the keyboard itself. As you can see, it's all black. It's got red switches as we've mentioned. It's pretty standard. Otherwise, there's nothing really fancy there to see, or at first. So it depends on how you prefer the style of this to be. So you can actually remove the frame to do this. You just hold down one of the keys on the corner and then pull up on the frame, and this bit comes off. So it will make the keyboard look a little bit different. It's totally optional if you prefer the frame to actually be on or off. That is totally up to you. I'm just going to take it off for now to have a look at the actual keyboard. Now on the back of the keyboard, you've got two USBs for pass-through, so that you can plug in things like memory sticks or even a mouse into it or something else. You've got USB Type-C, that is your charging connection where you would charge the keyboard up, or you can use the cable, which is 1.8 meters long, uh, to actually use it as a wired key, uh, keyboard instead of a wireless keyboard. So you've got the option on this keyboard, three different ways to connect it up to your PC. You can connect it up via a cable, as we said, 1.8 meters long. You can go through Bluetooth, uh, so you could even connect it up to a smart device like a, a phone or a tablet even. Uh, and you've also got the little adapter which is included on the bottom just here, which will pop out the bottom, which you can plug into your PC or laptop and use it via the standard 2.4 um, gigahertz uh, range, which is basically plugging the dongle and it works, is uh, the case there. Uh, but again, if you're running low on battery, oh no, don't worry about it, plug the cable in and you can use it via the cable. On the bottom of the keyboard, not a huge amount to see, you've got the model number and everything there. It has got four rubberized or silicon feet in the corners to stop it sliding around on the table, which is good. Also, the back ones, if you notice, there's no way to change the height. That's where these feet come in. You can actually attach these feet. And when I say attach, they're magnetic, so they just clip on like that. In all honesty, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that or not, because if you put too much force on it when you're using the keyboard, they could potentially pop off. Maybe not, but more than likely with me, uh, I'd put these in a bag or something like that. These would come off and I'd lose them. Uh, and then obviously you haven't got any replacements. So it would have been nice if there was a way to tuck them into the keyboard, a bit like you can with a receiver, so you can keep them safe just in case, uh, well, stops you losing them. You've also got two switches, so you've got on and off, pretty self-explanatory, and you've also got a switch which changes between your Bluetooth 
as well as your nano receiver you've got on the side there. Now to remove the keycaps, it's pretty straightforward. You get the keycap remover, put it over the key and then pull up and it should pull off like that. And then you can see the switch there. As we said, you've got a red switch. To get the red switch out, you use the other end, which is this bit here, a bit like tongs. You put it over, there's like little holes as you can see there, and that will clip into there and then you pull up like that and it comes out. So you can actually replace the keycaps and the switches if you wanted to, it does come with four spare switches. Would have been nice if they did come with, let's just say some white keycaps to go with it, just to replace something like the W, A, S and D, just give you a little bit more option there. But again, it's something you may want to go out and choose your own and pick your own. Okay, let's have a look at some of the lighting commands on here and different styles you got. The basics is you can easily change the lighting via the keyboard without going in any software or anything like that. Don't get me wrong, there is software you can download from the manufacturer's website, but the easiest way is doing it on the keyboard. And to do that, you hold the function key down and the home. Just bear in mind, we have turned out the studio lights so you can see this, so the overall brightness in the room is actually quite dull. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon in the winter, so it's just about visible in the room to walk around fine without putting lights on. Uh, but when you do have lights on in the room, you will find that it is um, not the brightest keyboard in the world. Don't get me wrong, it's good for a wireless keyboard, but if you're comparing it to a lot of cabled keyboards, uh, it doesn't get as bright. But obviously, this is battery. It's got to last on the battery, so RGB lighting is going to drain the battery pretty quick. So they don't want it that bright, otherwise it'll obviously drain it even quicker. But let's go through. So you've got the function key here. So you hold the function key down, press the home button. Now, as you can see, it changes the effects. There's quite a lot of different effects on here. I didn't count them all because there is quite a lot of variation. You can go through to your heart's content and you're more than likely going to find something you like there sooner or later. So, and even an off option as well. So you can choose specific colors and so on. Now, as you can see, lots of different options. You can change the brightness as well with the function button and the up and down arrows. Again, you hold down and it goes all the way to dull, which is all the way off, and then you hold it up and it gets brighter and so forth, and as you can see there. So there's quite a few different options you've got on there. There are other functions you can go through as well, like the backlight speed uh, as well, so you can increase and lower the speed. So depending on the style, you can hold the function key down and use the right arrow and it speeds up, the left arrow slows down. There's lots of different options on there you can do just through the commands. There are other commands on there. For example, you press the function and F1, it opens my computer, F2 browser, F3 mailbox and so forth. Uh, but that's totally up to you if you want to go down that route. So, but there you go. It gives you a rough idea of the actual commands on the keyboard. Okay, now I'm gonna do a sound test. If my voice sounds different, the reason is, is the microphone is over here and obviously I'm a bit further away from it. The microphone is exactly 20 centimeters from the top row of keys. So it gives you a rough idea what they're actually going to sound like. We're gonna test the individual keys, like your standard letter keys, the function keys, enter, space, and so forth. So you have a rough idea. Again, this is a red switch on these. So obviously if you go for brown or a different color, it's gonna sound a little bit different. So here we go. That was the standard key, so the enter key next. Spacebar. Shift key. Tab key. F keys. And the arrow keys. And again, W, A, S, and D in a full sentence.
Okay, so we've downloaded and installed the software and then plugged the keyboard in with the cable. Uh, obviously, you get your notifications, do you want to do this and that, and the other with Windows, which you have to say yes, and you get to this screen here, and it says connected device, so you can see the device picked up, you just click on it. Now, the first thing is that the cog at the bottom, it does say that there's a software update. I've clicked that, this download has been going through now for over an hour, um, that long that the keyboard actually disconnected from the software and I had to restart it again and start the download again and it is taking forever so I'm, I have no idea how good the software update is but I don't have all day to wait you can see it just jumped a little tab there so it's take really 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 taking its time so but if you press the house at the top it takes you back to that connected device screen there if you press the one what looks like a keyboard underneath, it takes you to the screen here, which you've got your profile. So you can pro set a profile up or multiple profiles. You can create new ones at the top by pressing the plus sign there. You type in the name and away you go. You've got delete, edit, and so forth, import, export as well. Now, profiles are good if you want to create, make certain keys do certain things. And to do that, you click on the key. Let's just say F1, for example. You can see that it's gone orange. And then you can click on either one of these numbers, characters, modify keys function keys or keyboard keys and that means when you press that button it will now do that command so for example if I wanted F1 to be let's just say print screen uh, then basically F1 is now going to be the print screen button it's as simple as that so the key combination as you can see it shows you on there is print screen and you can sell different profiles so you can have different keys set up for different things for different games or let's just say you're doing photo editing video editing you can set the keyboard up to do certain things depending on the keys you press which is pretty good and you can even uh, tell it to do macros and stuff like that which we'll get to in a second uh, that is the next bit actually so if you click this bit what looks like a command prompt line click on that you can insert events here before or after you can create new delete copy and so forth basically you can record a macro uh, which is pretty good and then you can save that macro and bind it to one key so whenever you press that key it will always do that thing the next button down is your light and you can see there's lots of different styles on here you can have it set up for so it'll do different things depending on how you've got it set up you've got brightness options animation speed so how fast it obviously rolls across the keyboards of lighting or how slow the sleep time so for example the rgb lighting will go off after 10 minutes and then depending on the setting you've got it on you can adjust the rgb colors as well and do color mixing or not next option down which looks sort of like a disco ball is probably the best way of putting it uh, you can basically basically make specific keys specific colors so if you wanted W A S and D to be a specific color you can have them as uh, specific colors and adjust it to however you want so those keys now W A S and D will phase in and out on a sort of a, a baby blue color or I suppose you could have it on green red or whatever but again you can adjust the colors all the way up and down the scale depending on how you like it as well as different styles so I can't really see any issues there again the cog at the bottom does let you do the software update as you can see it's still downloading it's not really moved there is a firmware option as well for the update but I haven't really done that because I didn't want to do it while the software update was going through because it was taking too long and obviously we've got other things to do rather than waiting an hour for a download and bear in mind it's not the speed of our internet because we've got a gigabit connection and it's running the speed it should be so um, all I can say is their servers must be busy or they've got really slow servers that's all I can think of because to download the actual proper software didn't take that long at all um, and for it to then up, want to update it's taken forever but there you go so that gives you a rough idea of the software not much else I can really say about the keyboard than what I haven't already it's basically a brilliant keyboard because you can have it wireless you can bluetooth it you can do it with a cable you can take the frame off or have it on just the RGB do macro it's a slimline one as in it's only a 75% keyboard it's missing a lot of the functions uh, like the uh, number pad and stuff obviously to save you room but also uh, obviously it makes it better for gaming in most cases because you've got less of a distance between your keyboard and mouse so I do recommend this keyboard
I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.